Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another entry in the Hyrule Compendium. Uh, today we're taking a look at a topic from just good old classic Nick Connor. Nick wants us to talk about our best side characters in The Legend of Zelda. So we, we talked about this a little for a short period of time off, off camera. And what does it mean to be a best side character? And then we, we were like, what about just best NPCs? And then we're like, how about just rememberable or cool NPCs? Just a few of them, because there are hundreds of them. Yeah, and there are a lot of endearing ones, too. Yeah, so these are more like ones that just like came to mind. I was like going game by game. Right, and we also we did a companions video specifically, so we're kind of excluding them from the conversation a little bit. Okay, so the first one that popped into my mind just as a, a reoccurring character who is obviously at this point a staple of the series is Tingle. Uh, he's kind of a polarizing figure, wouldn't you say? Yeah. But uh, I actually really like Tingle. What, what do you think about Tingle? Well, he sort of has reinvented his character a little bit. I think he went from being kind of a weirdo in Majora's Mask mm -hmm. with some of his quirky lines of text to in... Like, Wind Waker, people hated him, not so much for his character, but just how he's, like, a greedy person. Like, he needs all these rupees to decipher these maps. Mm -hmm. And people just, like, got, I think, it, especially in the original GameCube version, because you had to decipher all the trifles. Oh, maps. yeah. It's like, oh, God, I got to do that stupid thing with Tingle. Right. So I think he garnered that reputation more because of how the quest played itself out in the game. But now, I think he's a fun, lovable character. He's gone through phases, but I think he's all right. I see the thing in Wind Waker more of a gameplay flaw. It's not really his fault, <laughs> but uh, I, he's become very endearing. I think. Yeah. Like I, he's got his own, his own attitude. You know, like <laughs> he's got gotten his own game. So that says a lot. I yeah. think. Plus, he's, uh, you know, they cared enough about him to put him as a playable character in Hyrule Warriors. Oh yeah. <sighs> He comes to town and he's supposed to stay at the Stockbrot Inn. But if you get there on day one and like sneak in and talk to Andrew, you can say you say your name. And the Gora, his name is Link, but he's the he, his name is the same as your character. You steal his reservation. And then you can see him. He's like almost like a homeless traveler or something. He's just sleeping outside. And I don't know why, but I find this guy to be such a lovable character. I like his little hat he's got. Really makes like Link the Link. Mm. He's kind of a jerk when it comes down to it, you know? Yeah. Especially if he were to do it again in Majora's Mask, because you can reset time. Okay. <laughs> it's like, like after I... you know the outcome, you do it again, <laughs> yeah. even after you've completed that quest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he's a fun character. I like those little kind of small characters like that. Yeah, there are so many in the series where it's like they have just like this one little purpose, mm -hmm. but it's so good that it's yeah. it's like... That's sort of why I felt this was an impossible list to name your best because he's not one of my you know, most favorite characters in the world, but it's one that comes to mind. It's Yeah, it's a great little moment. Mm -hmm. kind of pairing it together you know it's like that's obviously like the classic side quest from the game so i feel like give that some recognition i like i like that you never see kafai as in his like true form basically his adult version of himself i think that's right. really cool and uh yeah well obviously the story is amazing and that there's two different outcomes even in that is cool or like two different ways you can go with it now here's a trick question okay. but is Kafai actually an NPC oh my gosh yeah <laughs> well okay so to go back to the tingle thing how many game Zelda games are there where it features someone other than Link and then how many Zelda games are there where you play as someone other than Link right that's true well tingle he is featured front and center 
in Tingle's Rosie Ripley Land. Exactly. Yeah. He gets his own game, and then Kafai is like in the. I can think of like three characters or four characters you play as that aren't Link. Right. Yeah. There's. Yeah. It, it, with him, it's like three rooms. Mm-hmm. That's fun. I like that portion. It throws you off. Like, oh, you get to play as him for a second. And the the conveyor belt thing too. It's a very stressful mm-hmm. moment. Yeah. I failed with it before. Oh yeah, me too. Especially the first time you do it. You know, you don't. You it just throws you off your game completely. Yeah. But yeah, that's just a great segment of the game, and and going back to like how many NPCs there are in the game and all these little moments. There are so many characters in the game who are there for other reasons too, but their lives center around just that side quest. So mm-hmm. like the mayor, the curiosity shop guy, um, e- even the Goron you mentioned sort of ties into that. The mailman. Yeah. Like I love how interconnected all these lives are. You know, it really right. feels like you're. Like, in a community, basically. Yeah. Some of the characters are part of the storyline that they're not even essential either. Andrew's grandmother is another one. Like, if somebody could put, like, on a ch- like a, like on a chalkboard with all the characters, with like you can draw lines on how they connect, you know? <laughs> Sounds like you're, like, tracing a murder or yeah. something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> huh? <laughs> You meet him on, I think it's the Proxim Bridge. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's the bridge in the like on your way to the Dueling Peaks Tower. And uh, you can talk to him, and he's just looking over the water. But then if you jump or if you stand at the edge of the bridge, he interrupts you. And he says, don't do it. Don't jump. Yeah. There's a lot more to live for. Please let me talk to you. Like, he thinks you're contemplating suicide by jumping off this bridge. It's such a, like, a cool moment that they actually included that in the game. Like, that they thought that through. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in most Nintendo games, but Breath of the Wild especially, where it's like, wow, they really, like, added that extra little detail there. They went Mm -hmm. the extra mile just, just to make it feel real to you. Yeah, and that character, he doesn't play any role. I don't think you can trade with him. I never he never leaves that bridge. <laughs> yeah, well he's like isn't he like he's like looking out for monsters or something? I forget what his purpose is, but uh, uh, he makes reference to the guardians. Oh yeah, he's like He says something about the guardians. I remember that. So the discrepancy between our list is like you have all these great little moments. Oh yeah, I I got a yeah. When there's a ton more and then mine are like these benchmark <laughs> characters who you know, there's also a ton more of them. So mm-hmm. that's, I love the like the hierarchy of characters. Yeah, that's what that's what I was saying. It's a, like nobody's gonna put this character as the best character, but like he's cool. We've talked about him in other videos. Yeah. He's one of the funniest characters, one of the best stories. Yeah, character evolution is key with him. He gets a development that a lot of other characters that aren't companions don't get, so that's pretty cool. And his music, his theme song is cool. How many how many characters get their own little theme? <laughs> Not many, very few. This is like one of the more memorable songs in that game too. I love the scene when he falls down to the sky. From the sky. Yeah. yeah, and he's like Terrified. shocked by everything. He wants to name it like Groose Land, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and at the end too, it is like, oh yeah, we should call like this tale of our adventures the legend of Groose. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's like kind of breaking the fourth wall yeah, a little bit, you know. Yeah, he's talking to the audience. There and there's so many in the community people talk about the legend of Groose, you know. <laughs> they oh. wanna play the legend of Groose, you know. <sighs> There's a DLC. DLC. That's a straight-to-mobile game. Oh my gosh, yeah. Because he's such a memorable character when you just literally walk up to characters and you just talk to them and he just says, I am error. (laughs) (laughs) What's great about it is so many other characters in that game, like a lot of games, is they'll give you a tip Mm -hmm. a piece of backstory you know they'll be like oh you should go check out the palace over there blah blah blah. come inside and talk to my dad or whatever but (laughs) he's just like i am error 
Well, I don't know if you know this, he actually does give you advice. Later on in the game, you go to another town, and, oh. and the guy says, talk to Air er in Raru or whatever about something. Well, that's what's so great about it is this whole time he's actually been giving you a tip. <laughs> yeah. Because if he didn't tell you his name, how mm -hmm. else would you know who to talk to then? Yeah, and I think I think he gives you the clue of south of King's Tomb is the secret that's to how to get to the uh, the third dungeon. They should bring him back. Error? Yeah, I, always, I, I feel like there's always a good opportunity to do it. I remember when I think they first announced Linkle. In uh, Hyrule Warriors, there was some artwork, or there was like a scene, and there was a, like a man or a guy with him. I remember there was a lot of speculation, it's Air, because he looks like him. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Breath of the Wild would have been a perfect game to have a character who at least like references him or something, you know? Heck, there might be a character named Air in Breath of the Wild that we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, ha it's hard to end this list without mentioning so many other characters, you know? Yeah. And Car and Medley and... Yeah, yeah. Th th that's why, like, I, I preface by saying these are not our. This is not a definitive list or even a favorites list. These are just ones that came to mind. I was gonna say the flute boy from A Link to the Past, but we've talked about him extensively. <laughs> yeah, I actually think I talked about Link the Goron before in a pr prior compendium as well. Mm -hmm. But just goes to show how much you like him. Yeah, he's a great character. Uh, you know, let us know if you enjoyed us bringing up some of these characters we could always revisit this later there's so many more yeah. there are so many there's a lot of characters in the oracle of ages in particular who they have one purpose right right yeah like there's a little kid who's like like the emo kid who's he lives in the dark his house is there's no light and like you he's part of the trading sequence yeah tell him a joke or whatever, the, the, right? the comedian gives you the funny joke and you tell the funny joke to him and after you tell it to him it shows like dot 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 ha that like you could think. yeah <laughs> and then he, he you know his character evolves because of one it's like one of those most minuscule things That's queen so ambie is also one of my favorite characters oh gosh she falls in love with a dead pirate yeah what's the charm of zelda is the nooks and crannies of all the little cute stuff yeah <laughs> let us know some of your favorite side characters whether they be big or small in the game um, let us know what other topics you want us to talk about. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.